My father died when I was 10. My parents instilled in me a sense of determination. So when I heard about the Whitbread Round the World race, it was just something I had to do. The genesis of the movie was that uh, I did a talk at a school in London and a man came up to me afterwards and he said, oh, that was so amazing, that talk. My daughter absolutely thinks you're amazing. Um, please tell me that no one has ever made a film of this. So I said, no one has ever made a film of this. And he said, oh my God, that's great. And then he started talking about scripts and actresses and I, I looked a bit disappointed. And he said, oh, you, you don't look impressed. And I said, well, I just don't know why you wouldn't make a documentary with all the footage. And he went, you have footage? The race committee asked for volunteers to take cameras on board. A lot of the boats didn't want to take cameras because they're roughy tufty professional ocean racing sailors who don't film. So we went, we'll take cameras. We just felt that we should record this for history. No matter what happened, if we made it or didn't make it, of course we knew we would make it. So they gave us a camera. We luckily went out and practiced because as soon as we had all hands on deck, Joe came up with the camera. I was like, you can't put the camera down. I said, well, how are we going to film if I, you know, if I can't hold the camera? So we were the only boat that had a second camera mounted on the radar mast, which is how we've got that incredible sailing footage. And of course, Joe was a natural. Joe took to filming like a duck to water. And it makes me laugh when we saw that footage for the first time. A lot of it we had no idea where she was filming because she used to hide. Um, so I think she used to get told to go away a lot when she, you know, she put the camera in your face and we'd be going, go away. So she'd hide, you know, and she'd get these wonderful little vignettes of life on board. And I think what makes the film so special is it's not just a series of interviews, which most of the guys did. It's these, this wonderful look at life on board. I made the decision to put an all female crew into the race. I didn't want a real job, I wanted adventure. And I just thought that would be fantastic. I was gonna do everything I could to do it. We didn't really take it seriously. There was nothing to show that they would be acknowledged for anything other than failure. I was so full of doubt and fear. All I was thinking was, am I the right person to do this? We were a team that was together longer than any other team in the Whitbread. We were together for two years. So um, that's a bond that's not easily broken. And, you know, we just sat there and watched it together. And I think that's the first time for a lot of us that we really realized what we'd done. I mean, we kind of knew what we'd done, but the impact and the, and the gravitas of it, I, I think the re movie really brought that home for us. You know, I'm English, I'm female. I spend my life apologizing for things. You know, someone tells me they think I'm great, and I go, oh no, no, please don't say that. It was my daughter in the end, actually, that said to me, mum, if someone says that they think what you did is amazing, they don't want you to do that. They want you to say, thank you so much. I'm very proud of what we did. And the film, for me, really helped me do that, finally. We weren't naive. We knew it was going to be hard. We didn't think they would even finish the first leg. It was something that we were told we couldn't do, but we were doing it anyway. This is the first time in my life I had stood up for something I believed in. And the harder it became, the more I wanted to do it. They finished the film in November last year, and just coincidentally, at the same time as I met Alex, uh, I had an email from the Seychelles saying, your old boat Maiden is rotting away in this marina as some guy dumped her here. You know, what are you going to do? We're going to take her out and sink her. So at the same time as they were looking for money for the movie, I was looking for money to rescue Maiden. So Maiden kind of burst back into my life, you know, in sort of... <laughs> I don't know, in a very forceful way. And uh, we got the money, we got her back to the UK. And it was my daughter again that said to me, she said, mum, you do all this stuff for girls' education. Why don't you use the boat to raise money and awareness for girls' education? That was when she was 14, scary. So I thought, I love that idea. And then it kind of grew from there because then people said, Maiden's so inspirational, you know, she should inspire young women. And the idea of the tour came about and stopovers and working with schools. Uh, having fundraising events, having school girls down to the boat, which is so much fun, I cannot tell you. Carrying a message of hope around the world, which is children, writing to other children. It's about giving them a platform, it's about how they want to see the world, it's about how they want to correct all the dreadful things that we've done to our planet. Um, and, you know, we have a, a message of hope, a call to action, and the ones that are chosen for the messages of hope, they put their hands on the spinnaker, and we've got a spiral of hands, which represents hands around the world. And when we finish the tour, the whole sail will be full of kids' hands. How many times were told we couldn't do it? You're not strong enough. You're not skilled enough. You'll all die. It was brilliant. Just completely overwhelming. <laughs> What if I tell you about a young girl who had a dream about sailing around the world?